now we're talking about heat related illnesses, heat exhaustion, even death due to heat, which there are more than 600 deaths, I believe, in the country each year due to heat related um, problems. And Dr. Paul is here with the Metro Public Health Department. Thanks for coming in. It's great to be here. Thanks. You know, you, you think this is something, gosh, this is so preventable. How does this happen? Well, that's a good question um, because it is preventable and yet people do die every year from exposure mm -hmm. to heat and so so you have to take it seriously and I think one of the things we especially have to do is think about who's vulnerable um, and make sure that we're protecting people who are vulnerable to the to the effects of extreme heat. And who is it in our population? I, we, mm -hmm. You know you always think of the elderly but beyond the elderly. Yes, um, certainly seniors uh, and people who are so socially isolated, um, mm -hmm. oftentimes uh, uh, when there are heat-related deaths, it may be people who, who are struggling with addiction or they may be on medications that make them especially susceptible. So those are some of the things that can, mm -hmm. can do it on the, among adults. But then very young children and infants are, are another group that's vulnerable. And um, you know, the one thing that you hate to hear about and we always remind people about is, is uh, making sure that infants or children are not left in a hot car. Oh my goodness, yes. And your pets too. Pets as pets well. Pets too. Okay, so what is the difference between heat exhaustion and heat stroke? Well, you know, this is something that, that is interesting to learn and maybe a little bit hard to remember, but, uh, but we, we'll talk through it a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, uh, because heat, uh, exposure to extreme heat can cause um, milder illness and more severe illness and so heat exhaustion is on the milder side even though mm -hmm. it can be very serious people are sweating profusely they're losing fluids from all that sweat um, they may be nauseated a little bit um, uh, they, they may they may have a kind of a thin pulse and they might start to feel clammy um, th that would be heat exhaustion of course fatigue of course weakness um, for heat stroke it's a much more serious situation and so that's where the body temperature goes up above 103 degrees people lose the ability to sweat their they their their skin is red it's dry um, they may have a pounding pulse and then the the symptoms of changing consciousness or even seizure can can set in and that that's a medical emergency it can be deadly so would people typically though go through those other steps first before they got to the the deadly situation would they be be uh, weak and have clammy skin and then go into the yes. you know pass out that yes. would be the progression most often yeah okay so what do you do if you find somebody in that state well I think if it's if anybody's significantly ill from heat exhaustion you're gonna want to call 911 and get and, and get some assistance right away but the basics of it, um, both for prevention and for treatment, one is if they can drink, give them something cold to drink. Um, get them in a cool place. If there's no air conditioning, um, that's clearly preferred, but at least get somebody into the shade. Um, so it's really uh, hydration with water or a sport drink and getting people in a, in, into cooler surroundings and to cool them off. Mm -hmm. In the more severe cases, uh, you, you may need to use ice. Mm -hmm. um, you, you want to expose as much skin as you can to the cool air. Uh, those are some of the things to, to kind of lessen the impact of that, of that overheating. Okay, I, and I don't know if we put this up on the screen yet. I didn't look over here about mm -hmm. the heat stroke symptoms. I know mm -hmm. we, we had the heat exhaustion symptoms, but if we didn't, we could have those up again. Mm -hmm. So you talk about the high body temperature. Right. What, what is the temperature there they are on the screen? Well, there we go, above, yeah. 100. above 103 degrees and red, hot, dry skin, rapid, strong pulse, throbbing headache, nausea, dizziness, and possible unconsciousness. So people may get combative, people may have a change in their mental status, and that's all signs of a really s severe um, heat stroke. Let's talk about people who choose to be outside for recreation mm -hmm. or for, for running, uh, jogging, <laughs> playing tennis or, or golf, or, mm -hmm. or really exerting themselves in the heat, maybe on pavement. Um, what are your recommendations as far as limiting your activity when it's hot? Right, it's important to know that this can be dangerous and and so for people who are that are, are really doing something recreational uh, oftentimes you'll try to do it in the early morning or in the evening when it's cooler uh, limit the amount of time have have more realistic expectations of how much exertion you're going to do 
Um, and, and then you're seeking hydration and you're seeking shade and, you're, and you, and you want to do everything you can to stay cool. Now, some people um, have to be out in the heat yes. because of work. And so it's important for the boss, for the employers, to be aware that there can be um, uh, uh, illness and danger mm -hmm, to, to mm -hmm. being in extreme heat for a long period of time. So um, again, hydration, hydration shade, yes, yes. periods in, periods in, uh, in, in air conditioning or in a, in a cooler spot. And wearing clothing that can breathe too, right? Absolutely. Covering yourself, yes. but clothing that can breathe. Yes. Okay, also, some, what are some other safety tips then for people outside um, besides uh, drinking plenty of water I know we touched on don't leave a child yes, in a hot car not for any length of time car. yes um, that's always tragic to hear about it, it is mm -hmm. amazing how fast the the air in a car heats up and how much damage can be done in a short period of time pets too mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, another uh, situation where 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 you can you can see tragedy in a short period of time. Sure. Also, I saw on our list, you know, like we talked about earlier, check on if you have elderly neighbors mm -hmm. or someone that you know tends to stay home a lot for whatever reason, like you said, whether mm -hmm. it's addiction or other problems, check on your neighbors and be yeah, a good neighbor. Yeah, you know, neighbor. for um, heat-related illness, the, the, the basic message of stay hydrated and stay cool is, is one that most of us really understand. Yes. So then we really have to be looking after mm -hmm. the vulnerable, and who's vulnerable? among us. Well, it is the seniors, it is the very young. Then there might be people who are socially isolated or people who are trying to say they can't afford the air conditioning bills. Yes. So you need to look in on your neighbors and make sure that they are able to stay cool when the, when the heat outside gets okay. extreme. All right, Dr. Paul, thank you. Thank you. This, it's this been a pleasure. This time of the year, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And we'll be back with more after this.